So a new study finds weakness is linked with a 45% greater odds of dying prematurely. I know that sounds a little bit crazy. We hear so much about cholesterol. We hear so much about heart disease and blood glucose and all these different factors. But we have a 12-year follow-up study involving 14,178 study subjects that were greater than 50 years of age that were part of the cohort known as the Health and Retirement Study. And the date of death was confirmed via the National Death Index. And hand grip strength was assessed using a hand dynometer. As many of you know, we've reviewed some of those. I have no financial ties with any of them. I'll put links in the description below that will link one to Amazon. Uh, there's all sorts of, of ways to assess grip strength and things like that. Now, I don't think there's anything magical about grip strength. I don't train grip strength. I don't recommend that you train your grip strength. I think doing things like farmer's carries and deadlifts and pulls and, and all that are wonderful. But I've seen all these videos of people trying to do dead hangs for three to four minutes. Uh, Honestly, I think just working out with using heavy weights is the best way to improve your grip strength. And it turns out that a higher grip strength after adjusting for other factors, body mass index and body size and all that is independently linked with a 45% lower odds of dying prematurely. And so uh, it turns out that strength actually matters. Now, I've shared with you before many other studies that have found this. Uh, one study in 2022 found that low grip strength was independently correlated with greater, uh, faster pace of biologic aging. So weaker people age biologically faster compared uh, to stronger people. And throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, there was a few studies that had grip strength assessments and looked at outcomes in individuals who uh, were either infected with COVID or were hospitalized and people that had lower grip strength were more likely to die comp compared to people who had higher grip strength. And now we have this study in involving 14,000 study subjects that were tracked over the course of 12, 12 years, finding that low grip strength is linked with a 45% greater odds of actually dying uh, over the course of this 12-year follow-up period. So I think this is really interesting. And they go on to say that weakness determined by a, a composite measure of absolute and body size adjusted strength capacity provides robust prediction of time to mortality, thus potentially informing sports medicine and health care practitioners' uh, discussions about the importance of muscle strength during aging. Now, again, why do we make a big deal about this? Because when you go to the doctor, it seems that, that you know, there's just so much focus on LDL cholesterol. I can't tell you how many clients I've worked with over the years who they go to the doctor and it's like, everything looks really good. Their, their body composition is good. They have six pack abs in their fifties or beyond. And, and it seems like the conversation just always goes to cholesterol. But what about these other factors? You know, we should be considering cholesterol in context and other age related biomarkers and independent risk factors for either heart disease or having a stroke or having cancer. And it turns out that strength is an independent risk factor that appears to be protective against premature morbidity and mortality. And since we're talking about strength, I just want to remind you, uh, one nutrient that can help you during exercise in terms of improving your strength and sports performance is creatine. That's why over at Myoscience, you get the creatine enhanced with electrolytes to increase the absorption of the creatine, as well as support healthy hydration. The two work hand in hand creatine actually also helps support healthy hydration drawing water into your muscles but in order to get creatine into your muscles you need electrolytes and that's why there's a close to 900 reviews over at myoscience.com on the novel creatine enhanced electrolyte six so definitely check them out check out the links in the description below and you can save with the code podcast at checkout so aside from creatine resistance training uh, increasing your, your the amount of protein that you're having uh, especially as you get older to improve strength i think is a really good thing to think about and start to prioritize. Um, you know, we hear so much about zone two training and increasing your aerobic fitness. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of doing that. I do my VO2 max on my birthday every year. I mean, that's all good stuff, but we want to focus on strength. This is an independent approximate of time to death. This study and many others, as we've been talking about, uh, clearly show this. So when are doctors going to start looking at this? I mean, we focus so much on body mass index and body fat percentage, but strength, I think, is important. So another thing to consider is when you're going to the gym, let's say you're done with your resistance training and you want to do some high-intensity interval training or some aerobic fitness training, use power as a proxy to assess your exercise intensity. If you've ever done any intense endurance athletics, uh, cycling, rowing, things like that, uh, most coaches will have you train using a power meter. And so you're going to look at watts. So if you're on the ski erg, if you're on the Concept 2 rower, if you're on the assault bike, if you're uh, even on a stair stepper, change the setting away from heart rate to power. 
train with power improve and do intervals based on power so you know if you want to do a four uh, you know a, a set of you know one minute on uh, one minute off uh, four sets of that for example or you want to do a 30 second sprint followed by a minute rest and a 30 second sprint minute rest you know just the the more intense the the interval will, will be the longer your rest period should be in terms of doing a high intensity interval uh, training session so you know, try to avoid training in heart rate zones. I think we should more focus on power. And because power is a direct uh, objective measurement of strength. And so if you're on the ski erg and you can only do 100 watts, let's just say hypothetically, you've got to improve your strength, right? Uh, if you're on the, the rower, the concept too, and you want to do a 30 second all interval and your peak watts is 200, you know, that's, you got to get that up a little bit. And so we, we can improve our whole body strength by training for power. I know that's a little bit different from what other people say in terms of zone two training and, and heart rate based training, heart rate based training, you know, can change based upon your life load, your life stressors, you know, sleep and, and all of that. So I'm a huge, I really like to emphasize training with strength. And, and that's why resistance training is so good because you know, if you can historically do three sets of six pull-ups, right? You can just bang out six pull-ups, rest 90 seconds, bang out six more. If that goes down to you can only do four, then something's changed. What is that something? Is it your your uh, exercise regime? Is it because you're not going to the gym anymore? You have a new child in your house, uh, life load, um, work stressors, sleep, all of that. And so we want to be using resistance training because you have more objective ways to assess your progress. And so if you're used to maybe doing a squat and you can normally bang out uh, 12 reps, uh, you know, three sets of 12, for example, with 185 pounds on a squat, you know, um, doing a or box squat or what what have you, and then you can't do that weight anymore. Something has changed, and and um, so strength is a really good proxy for how you are acclimating to your lifestyle. You know, this is more of a scientific wellness based perspective. So again, we have this study, we have multiple studies now finding that loss of strength is independently correlated with uh, increased odds of dying and all sorts of other illnesses and health ailments. So we should be prioritizing and training for strength. I would love to know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. As always, friends, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing this video. Thanks for hitting that like button. And we'll catch you on a future video down the road.